Back in 2019, a Florida man was charged with killing his brother, father, and mother. Also, he could steal $200,000 to spend on a model from Bulgaria who he met online. A new Paramount Plus docuseries, Control-Alt-Desire, investigates the triple murder and also features unprecedented access to Grant Amato, the man behind the murders, who tells his story through a cell phone he smuggled into prison. I want to give you an extended look at the man who blurred fantasy and reality. Thank you so much, Grant. Thank you so, so, so much. Deputies are searching for 29-year-old Grant Amato. Grant Amato remains in custody as a person of interest. Deputies considered him armed and dangerous when they began searching for him yesterday. I believe that people perceive me to be a monstrous, psychopathic human being. That is not true. Well, Grant, what's the right answer? What went wrong? My whole entire life, I was always online. He wasn't really forced to go outside, and he wasn't forced to interact with reality. Grant was just spending his entire day with this webcam girl named Sylvie. First time I ever went to a site like that, the first girl I met, I just fell in love with her. All right, Sylvia, please send me one of your videos. Welcome back, Grant. It was like acting. You know, I could be the person that I wanted to be in the real world. A lot of digital evidence was coming fast and furious, and none of it was good. None of it was good. What he was really doing is he was committing fraud. I started using my mom's credit cards, my dad's credit cards, just to kind of interact with Sylvia. Grant, wake up. It's virtual. She's not real. She doesn't love you. You're paying for it. Wake up. On the surface, we all look so prim and perfect. But underneath the surface, there's all the skeletons. Did you leave the house with your brother Cody looking like that? No. Or did you leave the house with your father looking like that? Or your mother? Who did this to your family? So I feel like it's important that I actually tell the truth. And we are joined by Colin Archdeacon, the director of Control Alt Desire. Colin, I mean, watching that, you wonder how you go from that online involvement to actually murdering the people that love you. How did you get interested in this story? Well, I was looking for a story that could kind of touch on the way that the internet is reshaping modern society, reshaping the way that we relate to ourselves, the way that we relate to our families. And when I saw this headline in the Washington Post about Grant's arrest, uh, it seemed like it had all this really rich material on top of this sort of lurid story about a cam model and the murder, but I thought there must be something deeper here. Uh, so I reached out to Grant. I sent him a handwritten letter. He didn't think much about it, never contacted an inmate before. And I think within five or six days, I received a giant handwritten, handwritten letter back from Grant. And sort of, we were off. I was the first journalist to kind of get a hold of him. And um, our relationship lasted about four years until this film came out. And Colin, I, I, I'm obsessed with this detail uh, about this smuggled in cell phone. Tell me more about how the relationship between you and Grant developed and how you were able to obtain this access to him? Well, what Grant told me is that the reason he decided to talk to me was that I was the first person to reach out to him that didn't ask if he was guilty. He wasn't really pushing on details for the night of the murder or even the lead up to the murder. I just wanted to know who he was as a person, how he felt about the position he was in right now. And at first, our conversations were monitored, right? They were on jailhouse um, pay phones, basically. I had to pay for all the calls. Um, they're recorded by the state. They were often leaked to the press. Um, and this was also during the lead up to Grant's trial. So we were very guarded about what we were speaking about. And then eventually, like you said, Grant was able to smuggle a cell phone into jail. And that's sort of when I met the real Grant. We were able to have conversations uh -huh. that weren't being listened into by authorities. Uh, and he felt more free to express himself. Uh, interesting that much of that conversation sounds like it developed and changed as he had more free access to speak Absolutely. With you. Another of the major turning points in my relationship with Grant is when his appeal was denied. I think for the first half of the years that Grant and I were speaking with each other, he sort of entertained this notion that he might be able to, to get out of prison one day. And once the doors were kindly sh finally shut for good and he realized he'd be spending his life behind bars, um, sort of the cracks in his facade started to show and the real Grant started to shine out, which was a character uh, he hadn't really exposed mm -hmm. to me. And Colin, you said something very interesting right before we went to air. You said that 
Grant's family reached out to you. What did they have to say? Yeah, so uh, a member of the Amato family reached out to me um, this week, a few days after the show came out, and told me, you know, they were scared to watch this series. They were upset that it was being made. Um, but that after watching it, you know, they were really touched by the professionalism and the respect that we brought to it. And, uh, you know, in the words of who wrote this letter, they thought that we told the story in the proper way. And they wanted to reach out and thank me. And that's really the best feedback you can get uh, for a film like this. All right, Colin Archdeacon, thank you. Thank you.